I think one pretty important thing that a lot of people, including myself, fail to do properly when connecting two or more lithium batteries in parallel is to properly balance them before deploying them. Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to properly balance two lithium ion phosphate batteries before installing them. Now we're talking about 12 volt batteries in this video, but it's pretty much the same sort of deal for whatever 24, 48 volts. So I have finally got my hands on a pair of these 230 amp hours and I'm gonna be installing them in my motorhome. But firstly, of course, we need to get them balanced. Basically to do that, all we need to do is connect them one at a time to um, a solar charge controller. I'm gonna be connecting it to my Victron 130 solar charge controller. It has Bluetooth, so I'm gonna be able to monitor from my phone probably the best way to do it is with an mppt that has some kind of monitoring or lights that tell you what stage of charge it's at so it's obviously got to support lithium ion phosphate batteries to start with but it's also super handy if it shows you when it's in the bulk charging phase and also the absorption and then finally the float because obviously when you get new batteries you have no idea what the state of charge is so yeah that's the first stage you're going to get one of these hooked up to the solar charge controller i've got about 400 watts of solar out there feeding into this controller so it should give it a nice steady charge we've got lots of sunshine today so firstly we'll go ahead and get these uh lead time 230 amp hour batteries unboxed now this video is sponsored by lead time who currently makes some of the best bang for buck lithium batteries available on the Australian market. As you might have seen in a previous video, I mentioned Will Prowse over in the USA who cuts open all brands of lithium batteries and finds out just what's inside them and he's always found good quality BMSs and good quality cells inside all the Litime products. So as far as value for money goes, Litime are way up there and even better at the moment, they are having sales and there are heaps of discounts on offer so check out the uh, video description down below for uh, any links and codes that I may have. Now one other thing that is a good idea to do, uh, even though your solar charge controller obviously has to support lithium batteries, you may want to check out the, uh, the recommended charging voltage for whatever batteries you have and uh, just make sure that um, your solar charge controller is set to those voltages if you're able to adjust those things. Yes, as I mentioned in a, in a previous video, these lead times have a crazy lifespan. You're looking at 4,000 charge cycles and that's if you take them all the way down to 0%, like 100% depth of discharge, you get a 200 amp uh, BMS in there. Recommended charge current is 46 amps. Uh, we'll be getting about 30 amps, hopefully out of my Victron. And it says here that the charge voltage should be 14.4 volts, plus or minus 0.2 volts. So I'll check that in my app for my Victron. Now it doesn't say anything here about float voltage, so I'm just gonna leave it set to whatever the default in the uh, Victron is. So yeah, as long as the uh, the charge voltage is set to somewhere between 14.2 and 14.6 volts, yeah, the absorption voltage is set to 14.4 volt and the float is 13.5, so should be good to go. We'll go ahead and connect this first one to the, uh, the charge controller. So you're probably not gonna be able to see what I'm doing here because the Victron is hiding down there on the floor, but uh, basically I've just disconnected the solar panels for now from that, and I'm just gonna be connecting this fused cable to it, and then the other end will, of course, go to the battery. Now I'm sure I don't need to tell you guys why it's important to balance these batteries. Just in case you didn't know, um, you know, it can cause problems down the track if they're not balanced. I've, uh, I've noticed these problems myself. You end up with one battery that's always a higher voltage than the other. You know, so one is always sort of getting charged more than the other. Okay, so we have battery one connected to the solar charge controller. I'm just going to hook up the uh, solar panels. It's saying our battery's currently sitting at 13.14 volts. All right, so we're getting about 170 watts in, about 11 amps. One of the panels is partially shaded still, but uh, that'll ramp up a fair bit once the uh, sun comes up a bit more. All right, meantime, I've got to go and install a new solar panel up on the roof of the motorhome, so um, we'll be back in a while to check on this and see how it's going. All right, it's been a couple of hours. Uh, we're pumping in nearly 400 watts to this bird boy now, and as you can see, the battery itself is almost at 14 volts, so it will switch over to... Uh, Absorption mode soon, still still in bulk mode. Alright, they mustn't chip these batteries with much power in them because it's taken pretty much all day to reach absorption mode, so we've reached 14.4 volts. We'll just let it keep going until it reaches the float stage. Alright, it's been a couple more hours. It is well and truly beer o'clock 
um, but the uh, charger hasn't gone into float mode yet. I guess it works a little bit differently and there's absolutely no load on the batteries. What I'm going to do is just disconnect the charger from the battery. Down here I'll take these wires off and just let it sit overnight and then I will get onto charging battery number two in the morning. Alright, battery number two has reached full charge, 14.4 volts, been through the absorption phase, so we'll go ahead and disconnect that one as well. Okay, so the voltage on this bad boy is now 13.4, and the battery from yesterday is now 13.6. So I could let them both sit like this for a bit longer, but uh, what I'm going to do now is just hook them both together so that they can equalize between each other. Basically it's just a matter of connecting the positive on this battery to the positive on the second battery and same with the negatives and then I'll just leave them until probably tomorrow a uh, good 12 hours or so so that they can equalize and then they'll be ready to uh, install. I don't imagine you'd need a super heavy duty gauge of wire for this uh, particular part of the process but I definitely wouldn't go anything too thin this would be probably overkill. Obviously I'm not bothering with ring connectors on both ends for this little temporary task. Right, we'll, uh, we'll be back in the morning. Alright, so after sitting, you know, wired together for about uh, 16 hours, they're both sitting on now about 13.5 volts, so we're going to go ahead and get them installed. As you would have seen there, these big batteries are getting a good workout on these cold mornings with the rooftop air conditioner set well and truly onto the heating mode. And they just sit there quietly doing their job, no stress at all. Excellent. Now quick disclaimer guys, uh, during my research on uh, balancing batteries like this, I did find some opinions that stated it doesn't need to be done. And maybe that does depend on your specific situation, like maybe different batteries react differently different BMSs but in my experience I think it is worthwhile doing if you have the time to do it and maybe even redoing it once every year or something like that if you find that they're getting out of balance. And anyway, I hope this video has been of use to some of you guys out there and a huge thanks once again to Lead Time for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check them out guys. If you're in the market for some extra batteries their prices are so good and I've also got an extra 8% discount code for you uh, down below. Do you take 8% off those prices that are already freaking very competitive? Competitive, you are going to save yourself some big bucks and of course they do have a five-year warranty all the protections inbuilt low temp charging protection on a lot of them over temp over current all that stuff super safe batteries they are building a really good reputation for high quality stuff now they've got those a-grade ev prismatic cells in the batteries big beefy bms's built really well definitely add them to your list of brands when you go shopping for lithium batteries and on that as usual thanks for watching catch you later